Death at the gates again. All in my name. Can't greet you today. I have a war to win. Hello there, Sir from 17 once again. This is my Wolfenstein, the new order. Uber difficulty video walkthrough. This is chapter 8, Camp Bellica. And the more observant of you here who've played the game will notice I've trimmed out a lot of unnecessary footage, uh, mainly breaking the machine. If you want to know how to break the machine, if you're struggling, you press right on the left analog, you press left on the, the left analog, and then you press down. And then you just repeat that until you get the plastic, the metal bit to fall off, grab it, chuck it in, and then repeat. It's very simple. It's a little unobtuitive at times. Un I don't even know what word I tried to say. It was a mixture of unintuitive and obtrusive, and it became unobtuitive, which I don't think we've created just yet, so I should patent it and make millions. But this is after Mr. Knife has just introduced us to his uh, knife, and I'm stabbing dogs. This entire level is one giant stealth section if you do it correctly, and I'm going to show you my path through it, which is essentially that. And then at the end, we're going to be in a robot, which has a very strange spawn me mechanism at the, the back side of it. But for the most, this is a very simple and fun level. And it's well designed, it's interesting. Like All the levels on this game are, are really fun. They're all different, they're all interesting and unique. Don't get me wrong, you're not going to see anything here revolutionary. There is a sewer level, you know, there's a submarine level, there's a moon base level, there's a lot of the old cliches, but it works, it's fun, and it's well designed. And there's not really much more you can ask for. Although, you know, of course there is. <laughs> but I'm going to use this moment to talk about a couple of conflicting things that uh, I've been going through for the last few weeks on YouTube and... Um, if you're not interested in the politics of YouTube, guys, feel free to, to mute me or skip to the next video or whatever. But I'm, I'm going to talk about this a little bit just to get it out there, just to tell people where I am and just to get some feedback because, as a lot of people know, YouTube is about people expressing themselves on their channels and it's also about interacting with people that either share that opinion or enjoy listening to it regardless of if they don't agree with it or not. And then the abundance of troll idiots who decide to just ruin it for everybody. Yeah nobody pays really much too much attention to but what, what I'm talking about uh, as far as as my channel is concerned is I'm, I'm kind of at a crossroads at this point so anybody who's been with me long enough knows that I'm not all about money you know I didn't come to YouTube to make money it's just something that happened and then the realization occurred to me that you know if I put the work in if I put the effort in I could be able to turn it into something special and I could be one of those people that says they do what they love. That was the goal, that was the ambition, and it still is to some extent, as I nearly get stabbed and poke this dude in the dick before getting a nice counter kill on him. That was very close, by the way. I could have taken it slower and mitigated that risk, but it worked to my favour in the end. And my channel at this moment in time is growing. Dark Souls 2 has given it a nice bump. Uh, but unfortunately, as with a lot of things, you know, it's still in the mists of obscurity thanks to much bigger channels creating inferior content but generating significantly more traffic and uh, this is not me hating on anybody this is not me you know whining or crying or any of the other very immature stances of, of ignorant drizzle that some people decide to share this is just an observation and it's, it's a true observation and it can be very frustrating as a content producer anybody who knows a guy called Bic Benedict who's been a part of his channel or follows him will know that recently he had a very similar, you know, just moment of, I wouldn't say desperation, just of a realisation that he puts in more effort than is being received on his content because of the way YouTube works. And it's very disheartening. And he made a video along the lines of, of asking for donations to support, you know, somebody who you respect, who you enjoy, because... It doesn't have to be a lot and they can continue doing what they want and it shows that there is an interest in what they do and while I personally think that that was a mistake on his part and I don't think it's the way that you want to go about it I do think there are other alternatives because I've currently been in a similar situation where I've been contemplating you know what do I do to to make this functional and what I mean by this is 
since I left university, I've currently been um, looking for a career in something that I really want to do, something creative, something interesting, and something that challenges me. And anybody who's done this or who's ever endeavoured to try to do this will know that it can be a very difficult and testing time. Because what with words like recession and, you know, they took our jobs and blaming everything on Eastern Europeans, even though it's utter bullshit. Uh, it's difficult to find certain types of work. It's a very competitive industry. It's, it's very competitive at all. You know, having a job in this day and age is, is a blessing. And I, I so happen to be looking for something that I want to do for the rest of my life or something I want to do for the next foreseeable future. And it's hard, folks. It's really hard. As much as people like to be derogatory and call people lazy and call people bums and say they should just get a job, there's a difference between applying for a job to stack a shelf and applying for something that you believe in. And at this moment in time, what I've been doing is I've been, you know, tailoring my cover letter. I've just actually rewritten my CV thanks to the help of my beautiful and intelligent girlfriend. And... I've had decent feedback from things, but it hasn't been groundbreaking. The most successful thing I've gone towards was the, the writing um, trial that I had with Ordinary Gamer, which essentially turned out to be a way for them to, to get people to write for them and they didn't have to pay them, which is very sad because I was hoping it could lead to something great. But, alas, it did not. But other than that, a lot of my focus has been on YouTube. I've been putting a lot of time into YouTube and I've been having a lot of fun uh, my subscribers have been enjoying what I've been doing, you know, the guides have been coming, the content has been high quality, and I don't really, there's only a few things I would change, and it's all down to situational things that I can't change until A, I'm employed, and B, I have the money to do so, so I don't really sweat those details. But there comes a time when you have to acknowledge that you're putting in more than you're getting, and YouTube has been that from day one. You know, it'll always probably be that for me. And it doesn't make me love it any less. It's just every so often you have those days where you feel like, you know, what's the fucking point? Nobody's watching it. Why even bother making it? And don't excuse this or, or confuse this, sorry. For me, you know, being self-pitying or anything along those lines, because it's not intended to be that, guys. I am being as level-headed with you as I can be now, and I pride myself on my honesty. And I'm curious as to what you think, because this was something that was actually brought to me by subscribers when I get to the gist of the point. But I have been putting a lot of money into YouTube and the money that I get back is not even enough to cover the cost of living. And at this moment in time, uh, I am surviving by the, the charity and the love of my parents and it's not fair on them. It ain't fair at all. And it, it, it saddens me a lot, but at the same time, sacrifices must be made if you want to stride for your dreams rather than just work some nine to five job that you hate and there goes your life and it can be a very tough and indignant you know challenge to, to continue in the face of adversity which doesn't really bother me because I'm often deluded enough to think that if I try hard enough I'll eventually succeed which is why my channel was built and which is why you see me doing the things in the videos that you see because I'm a stubborn guy that way but I've been thinking about alternatives to what I'm doing because you know it Realistically, it isn't working. Or it isn't working on the scale that I need it to. Which is not to say I want to be a super massive celebrity on YouTube, because I don't give a fuck about that. I just want to be able to make quality content for people that enjoy it. And if it paid for itself, it would be perfect. But this isn't a perfect world, and thus it isn't the way it is. So instead, I've been looking at other things, and I've been doing YouTube now for uh, just over three years. And I've been doing it essentially pretty much full time for... Actually, it's nearly four years, sorry. I tell a lie. It's, it's been a while, but I've been doing it for full, in full time. When it gets to December, I'll have been doing it full time, sorry, for about two years now. And really putting an effort and an emphasis on it and striving to grow it and all that kind of good stuff and, and enjoying things. And I just, I can't, like, logically do it anymore at the, the same rate I'm going because it's just in the long run it's it's bad expenditure and you know I'm hemorrhaging and I'm sinking and it's it's not the foundations of a bright future so I'm looking into alternative things and one option is to slow down 
I'm not going to say stop, because I don't think I'll ever stop, but have hiatuses from it and do other things, which is an exciting prospect because I'm all for trying new things, but at the same time, it's kind of a sad prospect because I like doing this and it's, it's awesome. It's just, you know, not in any way lucrative. And if you're the type of person that's coming to do this to, to get easy money, then you're in the wrong place. It's only easy money if you've already made it. And even then, it's more difficult than you know because you've never done it. But bringing it to the crux of the point, because I'm running out of time and I always talk longer than I need to because it's just a curse of mine, is when I've been looking for the last few... It's been about a month or two. I've been looking into alternative methods of doing stuff. Because my partnership... The payments that they've given me have not been to the scale to what my analytics show. So somewhere along the lines, I'm either being robbed, uh, I'm either not on as much as I thought I was on, or uh, I don't know what it is. It's just, it's either time for a new sponsor, a new partner, or it's time for something completely different. And some of my subscribers have mentioned to me uh, sites like Patreon and sites like Subbable which, if you've never heard of these sites, they're essentially the busker equivalent of a hat on the street while they perform. The difference being is it's, it's heavily modified to how you choose to want to conduct it. And what they enable you to do is they enable you to be patrons or something along these lines, which is essentially somebody who donates towards the content in the channel. And the first thing that a lot of people think, and even me myself think, is they, they use the term e-begging, which I understand completely, because essentially you're asking for money. But it's never been my intent to ask for money. I have been asked by people how can they give money towards the channel, how can they support something they enjoy, so I've given them the tools to do it, and I'm viewing a possible application to something like Patreon in the same light and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it out there for the people listening right now because to me it's it's one of those kinda of contradictory notions of it sounds really good to be able to let people you know contribute towards projects and the thing you need to know here folks is you don't have to pay anything to be a part of this and the content is still free but there are those who can choose to, if they want to, and it gives them an avenue to, to feel closer to the channel, to feel closer to, to what's being built. But at the same time, it makes me feel un uncomfortable, because I don't like to be thought as somebody who's, who's asking for money, because I have a donation tab at the top of my page at this moment in time that is intended for people who want to give money to do so. And I never, ever, advertise it. It's just not the way I do things. It exists because there was a market for it to exist. People were asking a lot to how they could you know, support the channel and God bless to every single person who's given anything because it means more than anybody knows. It's allowed a lot of things to happen, you know, and a lot of people have and their graciousness and their, their charity towards something that they believe in is, is one of the most humbling things you can ever feel. But at the same time, that there is a guilt that is associated with it. And I don't know if it's societal or what. Interesting factoid here, guys. If you sit under that awning and don't do anything, you'll be there for the rest of your life. You have to kill these people. This is not a time limit. This is kill a bunch of dudes until the robot turns up and then continue the level. But I've gone on too long here, so I haven't really been able to... T <laughs> to tell you... Uh, the main point of what I'm making but this is just an introduction and I'll probably continue it in the next video of uh, these services which I'm going to explain a little bit more and I'm going to ask you is this something you think I should pursue that I should you know put some thought into because apparently they seem to think it's it's really helpful at supporting creators and, and supporting artists you know continue to do what they do but then there's a whole other side of it of people saying, you know, oh, get a real job, do this, do that, and, and all that kind of stuff. So I suppose what I'm really looking for it is a consensus of, is this something that you think the channel needs or could use positively? Or is it something that you think I should stay clear of?
because I see both sides of the argument and as I've mentioned I'm gonna go further into it in another video just to kind of get my thoughts across but it's just I don't know I don't know how to do what I'm doing any better other than sabotaging the very principles that this channel is based on and if I was willing to do that you know I would not be having to say this I would not be having to, to even propose this and I'm just curious as to what people think it's interesting and it's conflicting and I've been thinking about it for quite some time but who knows man you know I might get a reply in my emails later on today from one of the many applications I've sent out saying here come for an interview and boom the career's there but you know from the the look so far and from the responses that I've had it just doesn't seem to be that that's the way it works but thank you for listening anyhow folks I appreciate all uh, feedback on this I just would like it to be a, as mature and as constructive as we can because nobody needs to call it anything other than what it is I am a content creator and you are my congregation and regardless of what people think you are the most important part of it and as much as I make videos for myself and it's awesome that other people enjoy them it is undoubtedly driven by you and this is an opportunity for you to have your say and to, you know, get some driving experience.